Have you found Genesis 28 yet? Is it, is it behind me? I don't even know. I don't even know. Awesome. Praise God. Let's start reading at verse 10. Then Jacob departed from Beersheba, and he went towards Haran, and he happened upon a certain place. Just turn to your neighbor and say, a certain place. That's where he was. He was at a certain place. That's where he was. And he spent the night there because the sun had set. And he took a stone from the place and made a support for his head and lay down. Now, the first time I read that, I thought, that's the worst pillow in the world. I mean, I have certain qualifications for a pillow, if I'm going to use a pillow. And, and not being made of stone is definitely one of those qualifications. But then someone explained it to me that the desert gets very cold in the night. And if the stone has got really, really hot during the day, it's warm at the night. So what he would do is he would snuggle into the stone and get the warmth off the stone. And he would hug that little stone and go, it's keeping me warm. What a nice stone. Thank you for keeping me warm. And he had a dream. Probably because he had a restless night's sleep because his pillow was a stone. And behold... A ladder was set up on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Then behold, the Lord was standing above the ladder. And the Lord said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham. I'm the God of Isaac. And the land on which you lie, I will give to you and give to your descendants. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth. And you will spread out to the west, east, north, south. And in you and in your descendants shall every family on the earth be blessed. Behold, I'm with you. I will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I've done what I promised. Now what place was it again? A certain place. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, the Lord is in this place and I didn't even know. And he was afraid and said, this is an awesome place. Say awesome place. So when he went to bed, he was in a certain place. But when he woke up, he was in an awesome place. Did he sleepwalk? Did he move? Did someone pick him up in the middle of the night? No, the place was still the same place. But his perception had changed. And when his perception changed, he took the stone that was his pillow. I've got to over-enunciate this because I'm from Estuary English here. A pillow... And he put the pillow upright and made the pillow into a pillar. And then he worshipped God and gave money to God. Because he said, God's here. And therefore, because God's here, I'm not just going to hold on to this meeting and go, give me all the warmth. Because some of us have come here just to get some warmth today. I need healing. I need blessed. I need my breakthrough. I need to touch Andrew Ormack's hand. You joke, we had a lady come all the way to our Suffolk church. She came, she ran into the church service. She went, is this how small this church is? I thought, I've only been running for a few weeks. What is wrong with you? She put her hand out to shake mine. She said, I know you've touched Andrew's hand and now I'm touching your hand. I said, I washed it since. And then she ran out again. Never saw her again. Bless her. But for whatever reason you've come... I want to challenge people today. And I'm particularly speaking to Tree of Life family because that's what God's given me as my sheepfold. But any guest today, like Chris just said, you came to a Tree of Life church, what do you expect? Tree of Life. I want to challenge you today because the grace message and the grace movement in the UK is at a crossroads. And the crossroads is this, where we keep hugging onto it. Tell me I'm righteous. Tell me I'm pure. Tell me I'm awesome. Tell me I'm blessed. Or will we get up, worship God as righteous people, praise God as blessed people, tithe as abundantly prosperous people, and worship Him and say, I'm going to change this nation. And the choice is on us. The choice is absolutely on us. You know, we we found Richard Waller, Richard and Jackie, where are they hiding? They're probably serving somewhere. There they are. We found them at Grace of Faith. As of February, they're pastoring six of our churches. Because they made that decision. This isn't just something we cling on to. We're going to go. 
I don't want anyone to feel that they've got to go from conference to conference. Next Sunday, we're in 10 locations across the UK. Actually, more, because we're driving up to Scotland. That's 11. Is Bristol on this week? There's 12. There's 12 places you could go next week and be taught the word and worship. And it's so important we get involved with these things. And maybe your story needs to be John and Emily's story or Rich and Jackie's story, the story of any of these pastors, any of these elders, any of these leaders. It's great to have you with us. And Andrew Womack's here today, and that is an honor and a privilege, and we don't take that lightly. We've closed down 10 churches so that we can be here today. Our people have taken bus and train and car and underground. Nobody's taken boat. We found that out. Now, some of you might have listened to my Wednesday live stream. The only reason I invited Andrew was to preach to me. I made that very clear. I said, that's it. I said, if I'm going to sit down and not preach for a week, I need someone who's going to stretch me and encourage me and inspire me. And if you guys get blessed as a byproduct, I'm happy. But if I get stretched, tree of life gets stretched. And so that's why he's here. But I didn't realize what God was speaking to me and what he's been speaking to me all week is that what God wants to do is to bring us to a place where every one of us steps up and says, I'm not going to be a pillow person anymore. I'm going to be a pillow person. And I believe that one of the ways in which we show that is in our finances, in our giving. And I believe that, listen, I've earned the right to speak about money this morning. We've paid for this whole thing. Before you walked in the door, every bill was paid in full. Okay? Every single bill was paid in full. And I've also earned the right to speak about money to you in Whitechapel, in London, in England, in the UK, because I'm not American. Okay? I was born in Essex. You know what I'm talking about. Okay? I'm British. I'm English. I was born right here in the east end of London. I was raised in Scotland. I married a Welsh woman. I've got a Welsh son, an English son, and a Scottish son. I've got an English daughter as well. But you know, every time you talk about prosperity in church, I always get someone say, oh, I don't want to hear that American doctrine. Hello? How can it be an American doctrine? Paul was in Italy. Does everyone know, not Italy, Alabama. And not Rome, Colorado. Paul was in Rome, in Europe. That's our continent. I know politically we're not in the EU, but geographically we're still in Europe. We didn't move. And Paul wrote to Philippi, which is in Greece, which is not in America. And Paul in Italy wrote to Greece and he said, My God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. It's not American doctrine. It's a Bible doctrine. This is the first time that Andrew's been in the UK in a few years. And we should honor that he's here. And the main way of showing honor in the Bible is giving. Honor the Lord with your possessions. The Hebrew is hone. It means something of high value. And with the first fruits of your increase, then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow. Don't tell me, I haven't got anything in my barns I can't give. You haven't got anything in your barns because you don't give. This is not an American doctrine. This is the truth. Paul wrote to Corinth. Corinth Corinth is in Greece. Didn't know you were going to get a geography lesson today, did you? Paul wrote 2 Corinthians from... You must know chance. You've been there loads. Macedonia. Paul was in Macedonia, wrote 2 Corinthians, and he said, He who sows generously will reap generously. That word generously in the Greek is eulogia. So we got an English word, eulogy from. Ever been to a funeral? You know, when you die, if I do your funeral, I'm not going to read out everything you've ever done in your life. That'll take too long. I'm not going to just read out the bad bits either. We're going to edit those bits out and just read out the best bits of your life. If you sow eulogia, the best bits of your life 
you will reap the best bits of his life. If you sow generously, you will reap generously. If you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. It's, it's every English translation seems to have that differently in that verse because it's so difficult to translate. To give the very best. I know I'm talking about money in church and I know a lot of the British people are switched off. But if your barns are not filled with plenty, I suggest you listen. Don't write this off as an American doctrine. What's happening today has been a sign from God to change your life forever. Now, like I said, tree of life, we've paid this whole thing off. Some of you, 4% of you, thank you, have paid for your seat in advance when I sent out some emails to ask you to do that. And I'm grateful. But we paid for this whole thing. 96% of this in advance. And so this entire offering, every penny of this offering, everything given today is going to go straight to Andrew Womack and his ministry. Okay? Tree of Life is not making a penny out of this event. Why would I do that? Because I want to honor God. Because God has set aside today to change your life forever. This is not an overseas American doctrine. This works in the UK. 2020, the year of lockdown... We had, as a ministry, 24.9% year-on-year increase. The year after, was, it was double digits. It was the 11 or 12%. In fact, the truth is, I don't know what it means not to increase year-on-year. I have no idea. I don't know what that means. And I'm not going to find out. I said that to a pastor in America. It was actually your pastor's conference. No one you know, thankfully. And they said, yet. I said, don't you dare. I was one step away from get behind me, Satan. I don't know what it is to decrease. What I do know is I know how to give. And I want to help everyone in this room, whether you're a pastor, whether you've been a Christian for two minutes, whether you're not a Christian, whether you're tree of life, whether you're not tree of life, whether you're not tree of life and you lied and said you were to sit near the front. Whoever you are, I know how to increase. I know how to walk in abundance. I know how to ignore what the bank account says and do what God told me to do. And I want to help you today. So I want you to listen before we take this offering. Our very first summer family conference, Heal the Nations, 2012. Who was there? Uh, Yeah, about six of us. Thank you guys. Thank you all. There was about 150 people there. And it was just Dagenham and Guildford. I don't know if we'd started Watford yet. I'm not even sure if Watford had started as a church. If it even just started or just about to. So our two churches met together. Between the two of us, we made about 50 people. And another 100 people came to hear Dave Duell because he was the main speaker. 150 people there. Four-day conference. The budget was £11,000. And we had paid nothing up front. We had nothing. We literally had nothing. We needed to raise that £11,000 in four days or we weren't going to be able to make it through that conference. It was just going to crush us and probably shut the church down. So the first night's offering... I'm watching it very carefully because I'm nervous. We raised just short of 300 pounds. 150 people in the room. Less than two pounds per person. I was like, oh my goodness, we're not going to make this. We're not going to make budget. I'm lying in bed. What do I do? As I'm lying in bed, I need to say something to people. No, I don't. I need to trust God. No, I need to get up there and say something. No, I need to trust God. And I'm in two minds. And I can't sleep. And then I remembered something. That of that nearly 300 pounds put in that offering on the first night, I put 200 pounds in. In 2012, my mortgage was higher than my salary. If you've never planned a church, you've no idea what that statement means. We were stuck. So I got up the next day and I said, I dare you to give 200 pounds. I dare you all to just match a man whose mortgage is more than his salary. And the money came in. Rich and Jackie gave £200 in that offering. I remember that. And you you had a miracle just within a week. Yeah. Just miracle money. I I know how to give. I know how to teach people. I know how to get people into their financial breakthrough. We we didn't quite pay the budget, but our next Sunday's offering we did. And we had so many testimonies of people giving. Last summer, conference that Greg spoke at, budget for that was 40-something thousand pounds and every penny was paid before we walked in the door. On the Thursday night of that conference, I knew that I was walking out of that conference, it was last August, to an £11,000 bill for here. 
I knew it was going to be £11,000. That was the last bill to pay off everything for this place. And so I challenged the people. I said, I dare you to raise that money so I don't have to go into my savings, don't have to go into the bank account. I've, we had the money in the bank. But I just want to have the money from this offering. And I said, I believe if you give from this offering, then God will do the same for you the next time you get a big bill. The money will just be there. We raised £16,000 in one offering. 200 and something people in the room. There's six times that amount of people in the room right now. So if you guys can't beat that, first time Andrew came, we raised 14,000 in one offering. We gave six, we gave 20,000. We had an extra 6,000 on. Why? Because I believe in honor. I believe in increase. I believe in giving. I believe it's the only way to succeed. Why did I give so much to Andrew Womack's ministry? Because I know who I was before I started listening to him. Man, I was proud. I was religious. I was a zealot. I was such a good preacher. I could make you cry. Man, I could beat you up. I'd never raised up a pastor in my life. I'd never raised up anybody. I could not have done what I've done. I could never be running a network of churches without what Andrew Womack's taught me. Never. I'm not lying there. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not trying to hype things up today. Before I heard Andrew explain to me, I could never have taught anyone they were right with God because I didn't know I was right with God. I didn't know. No one told me. And now my life has changed. Andrew and his ministry, it's a vessel that has brought me so much truth. And you have to honor that. You have to honor that. I used to have, back in the old days, in the 90s, I had 150 of Andrew's cassette tapes. And I'd listen to them seven times a day, eight times a day, nine times a day, over and over. I wore some of those tapes out. So important. It's getting sorted, don't worry. Listen to me, I'm more edifying than what's going on over there, I promise. Listen to me. I'm in my place called there now. I know the true nature of God. My heart is no longer hard. Oh, it's not as soft as it could be, but I haven't arrived but I've left I don't fall apart like a two dollar suitcase anymore the devil doesn't get to steal my lunch and pop my bag anymore let me tell you something I don't limit God anymore do you know I read that book don't limit God every month I've read it over 70 times takes me about three hours I never go a month without reading it I'm only just starting getting it That's why I'm talking about opening 100 churches. That's why I'm talking about changing this nation. That's why I know we're going to open eight new locations in 2023. Because of what I've learned, what I've studied, and a lot of it's come from listening to what Andrew teaches and listening to him minister. So we're going to honor that today. We're going to honor him today. He that sows sparingly is going to reap sparingly. He that sows bountifully is going to reap bountifully. And here's the challenge. Because some of you, it's just been a pillar. Let me take everything I can get. Where's my free bag? What's the cheapest book on the bookstall? What's everything I can get for free? And some of you today, it needs to become a pillar. You say, this ministry is one I'm going to honor and give to and invest in. And I'm challenging you today. If you want to reap more bounty than you've ever done, this is my challenge. This is what God told me to do. And I'm telling you, give more than you've ever given before. And that will get you where you've never been before. If you give more than you've ever given, I believe some of you today, I believe we're going to give away, Tree of Life is going to give the biggest offering we've ever given today. Let him who's taught in the word communicate to him that teaches. Because God is not mocked. What you sow is what you reap. And when you have an opportunity to sow into the life of someone who gives you the word, you will reap. You will reap. You'll get the best of God's life. And I want everyone in this room to be a reaper. I've been praying about this and believing God about this. And this is the challenge from God. Give more than you've ever given and you will receive more than you ever have. It is time for this nation to change. And one of the things that must be broken in this nation is a poverty mentality. Did you notice we didn't hire a warehouse with sawdust on the floor today? We're not in the middle of nowhere. Oh, it's infrastructure. We have to break this mentality. Arthur Menches a few years ago did a tour of the UK came to the Tree of Life last and at the end of coming to Tree of Life he said Ben if you guys hadn't given me I would never have made budget for this trip he told me about a church he spoke six times in two days they gave him less than a hundred pounds another church he spoke two nights for they gave him nothing 
So you know what I did? I took the offering we'd given them and I matched it from our savings and gave him double. Do you know why? Because he's not going back to America and saying the UK is tight and mean and stingy. He's going to go back and talk about generosity. I feel so strongly about this over this whole nation. This is not an American doctrine. No one is going to say the UK is tight and mean. One of the things Andrew's been teaching on so much recently is the third great awakening's here. Study the history. We were in, the UK was integral in the first and second great awakenings. I'm not going to miss out on this one because we don't have the money to fly there or go there or do what God's called us to do. And I'm challenging you today. This is not just an event. This is a moment God has set aside to break that mentality. And he hasn't chosen an American to tell you. He chose me. Boy from S, I, I know what it is. I know what it is to struggle financially. I've been there. I know it's the struggle when you're starting your ministry. I know it is to be praying in tongues to know what's going to happen next. There's 10 people in this room at least. You've never given a thousand pounds to a ministry. Today's the day to start. Today is the day to say, I honor this ministry so much. There's at least another 10 people. You've never given 500 pounds. And there's so many of you. No one who was at Heal the Nations last year, but you've never given 200 pounds to a ministry before. Break it, break it. If God's telling you to give 200, give free. Break this thing today. Break it off your life. Become generous. Become a new level. Some of you have emailed me. Andrew's teachings changed my life. It's, it's done this, it's done that for me. But you've never even given 200 pounds to his ministry. We were just at his pastor's conference. Not, not, the offering bucket didn't go by without me putting at least 200 pounds in every single time. I'm not playing games anymore. We're trying to change this nation. You know, how many of you know I, I offered to hire the Troxy with a, a hug and a prayer? I'll give you a hug. I'll pray for you in Jesus' name. No, we need cash. Every building, every venue we use every month needs money. You, God wants you to weep. He wants you to be wealthy. <laughs> Somebody in this room right now, God has just told you to give everything in the account. First time I heard Andrew teach, I gave everything in my account. It was only 10 pounds. That's all I had. If you've never been to Bible college, I have no idea how poor I was, but I was that poor. Within an hour, someone gave me 80 pounds. I was like, praise God, that's enough to get home. A few years later, I gave everything I had. It was 600 and something pounds. Within a week, I got a new job. I was unemployed at the time. I got a new ministry, and someone gave me a check. Someone met me on the street and just wrote me a check for the best part of 2,000 pounds. God can get it to you. God can get it where you need it to be. Something very special is happening right now. I gave everything in the church account away two weeks ago. I did. I gave everything we had in our church account. We had a preacher came. And he wouldn't take an honorarium from us. Wouldn't let me give. How dare you get in the way of my giving? To me, that's the same as trying to feed me chocolate cake when I'm trying to fast. Don't get in the way. I'm trying to do something spiritual here. So I went to where he works and I found out how to give money to him. And I gave him everything. He wanted nothing, so I gave him everything. That was just a few weeks ago. All our pastors got paid on time. All of our venues have been paid. I've got two TV bills due tomorrow. I'm going to walk out here and pay them. I don't care what the bank account says. Am I bothered? I'm not bothered because I know what I'm talking about. And I'm here today to help you. To get you where you need to be. Now ushers, I want you to hand out the envelopes. I want everyone in the room to get an envelope. This is so important this moment. Some of you think I'm talking too long. I'm taking too long on this. You're the same people who worked 55 hours this week to get money. Not to mention the amount of time it took you to put your makeup on to look good enough to go into work. And then you had to drive there. At the same time, everyone else had to drive there. You're in the queue and you're traveling. All these hours and effort you put to making money and you don't have 20 minutes to listen to what Jesus and the word of God says about money. You need help. I said on Wednesday when I did the preparation meeting for this on the stream to our churches, I said, don't get upset if anyone talks about money for too long. I didn't realize it was going to be me. (laughs) Listen, this is a moment from God. If you want to use your devices, get your phone out, get your thing out, whatever you use. This is not a mobile phones off church, by the way. Take pictures, get involved, do what you got to do. 
you know, hashtag I love the tree. We can see your quotes and comments. But it's tree.church slash donate. And I know some of you just love PayPal, tree.church slash PayPal. So they're there, tree.church slash donate. You can give via your devices. How are we doing with those envelopes? You can't see a thing, can you? It's awesome. Go preach by faith. <laughs> I like being able to see the whites of people's eyes. Awesome. Okay. Just put your hand up. You've got an envelope. I reckon I can see hands. Awesome. Awesome. All over. Praise God. Okay. So write what you're going to give. If you're going to give more than you've ever given before, whether it's a thousand pounds, five hundred pounds, a couple of hundred pounds, whether it's two silver coins, two bronze mites, two copper coins, whatever it is. If you're going to give more today than you've ever given before, just stand to your feet. I'm going to pray for you. And then I'm going to pray for everyone. But if you know, today I'm going to honor this. I'm going to break this thing forever. Stand to your feet. Praise God. Praise God. I thank you for everyone standing. Something very special is about to happen. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for everyone standing. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus that as they sow generously, more generously than they ever have, Lord, that you would deal with them more generously than you ever have. Lord, that their hearts would be open that everything they give today would be given back to them. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. You would give them witty ideas. You would enable them to know what to do with the power to get wealth and walk in that victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's all stand together. We're going to make some declarations over our offering, and then we're going to receive the offering. If you're a UK taxpayer, I know it's dark out there, but if you're a UK taxpayer and you fill in the envelope, we get the money back off the government that you would have earned earning that money, if that makes sense. The income tax that you would have earned, we get that back. And I've said this ever since we started Tree of Life, and it becomes easier to say every single day at the moment, we will spend it more better than the government would. (laughs) We will spend it better than they would. We will do things. We'll make sure Heal the Nations happens next year. We'll make sure more conferences happen. Ezra 1 verse 6 says you encourage people with your giving. I want you all to encourage Andrew Womack to say, hey, going to Tree of Life was a good idea. Father, thank you. Right, we're going to make these declarations. Say them with some passion in your voice. These are true. This is the word of God. I will not sow sparingly. I will sow generously. I will give freely, empowering my gift with love. I will give cheerfully and expectantly. I will be abundantly blessed in all things at all times having everything I need to keep giving more and loving more. Good comes to me because I'm generous. Good comes to me because I give freely. Good comes to me because I'm righteous. I give today so others will be able to give thanks to God later. I give in love and faith, and I'm more blessed today because I give. Because I've given to the work of the Lord, I sow much and reap much. I eat and I'm filled. I drink and I'm filled. I'm clothed and warm. I always have more in my pockets than I think. Amen. Take your seats. Ushers, please pass the buckets around. Thank you. Awesome. Praise God. Man, some of you feel better already having given in that. I'm telling you, God's lifting you to a higher place. A higher place, man.